Hey there! Welcome back to Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick, and thanks for joining us on episode number 23. And we, as you can see, are back from trip to Ireland, which was wonderful. And you can see, you're probably wondering why I'm surrounded in Tullamore. You're probably thinking to yourself, you know, if you've watched other videos, you're probably like, why the hell are we back to Tullamore? We just did a maybe month and a half um, little mini series on Tullamore with all the ranges that you see here. All these reviews can be found um, going back in time, whenever that was. So, why are we back? Well, I had the pleasure of going down to Tullamore while I was in Ireland and got to visit the Tullamore Dew um, Visitor Center, the uh, Heritage Center they have there, and had a nice tour um, of what used to be their old. Um, old bonded warehouse and they converted it to a pretty unique experience I would say um, I think the guides and you know the visuals hands-on kind of things they had during the tour were you know pretty helpful and informative uh, certainly so why well while I was at Tullamore I managed to pick up a couple goodies that weren't over here in the good old United States and I didn't even know it existed at all. So we're going to shove these to the side without, you know, throwing tons of whiskey out of here. Glass in the viewing. And what are we reviewing today? Well, we have the Tullamore Dew Old Bonded Warehouse Special Release. Um, why haven't you seen it before? Because you can't get it here. And you can't get it anywhere else other than the visitor center. That's the only place where they have it. Um, maybe some random store somewhere has bottles of it, I don't know. But, um, as they say, it's only in this visitor center where you can purchase this. And during the um, tastings that we had at the end of the, uh, the tour there, it got to sample a bit. And I thought, hey, this is you know definitely worthy, um, not alone just because you can't get it, over here, but because it actually tasted pretty good. So I said, why not? We'll make this review uh, 23. And so here we are. So this is, is pretty interesting. Um, you can see, obviously, it's smaller than the other boxes because it is bottled um, slightly smaller bottle, as you can see there, 700 milliliters. Um, but not to worry because they've made up for it with a little more information, a little kick up. Um, they've bottles this at 46% ABV, which I think is wonderful, 90, 92 proof. So that gives us the opportunity to taste, you know, this full, um, well, it's probably a, a me more medium uh, bodied Irish whiskey, but to be able to taste that at a higher strength alcohol, um, giving us the opportunity to taste more that's in there while still giving us, you know, the opportunity to um, you know, add a couple drops of water, see what changes, that sort of thing. So what they're doing is providing a better experience um, for us, um, which is great. Um, also, as you can see on here, which seems to be the new trend in the industry, is a little more uh, full disclosure, it's non-chill filter. So, you know, they're getting right out there um, and telling us right up front, which I think is wonderful, chill filtered. Um, or not, whatever your opinions is on it, you know, if these distillers can state it, you know, that just makes us more informed. Now, so this is a um, triple blended um, Irish whiskey, triple distilled, so you've got the, um, some nice mellow grains in there, the malted barley, and the pot still content, which, you know, unmalted and malted barley. Um, in this particular one, um, release, the pot still content is said to be higher, and you can definitely find that in the nose as well as um, the tasting as well. So, let's pour a little bit. I know it's kind of, it's a little tight in here, a little crowded, because we've got so many great whiskeys around us. There we go. A little screw top, but not to shy us away at all. We still love it. Uh, something. I have a feeling like something is going to fall off by the end of this review. Let's hope not, but hey. Shit happens. 
So, let's go in, look at the color. Um, it's got that traditional, you know, golden um, honey in there. Nice. Um, give it a, as Ralphie says, if you, if you watch his reviews, and you should watch his reviews because I think he's just a wonderful commentator. But, you know, a stroll around the glass. Um, you don't need to vigorously shake it. Um, someone's probably going to smack you. Um, if you do that at a whiskey tasting or something, so don't know if the camera's gonna get it, but you can just take my word for it. You know, it's a nice golden honey. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long it's been aged. Um, you know, this is this is commemorating um, the opening of the visitor center in 2012, um, whereas the Phoenix is celebrating um, the return to um, Tullamore. Um, for distilling, which um, we know is relatively new, so they're not actually um, selling the spirit yet because it, it hasn't been aged the minimum of three years. So hopefully, um, we'll, within the next couple of years, we'll be seeing um, whiskey out of Tullamore um, and not Middleton, where the whiskey is sourced for this, um, which we all know. So, let's go in for the nose. Now, one thing I forgot to mention that ties in directly with this is um, maturation. Now, these are aged in um, Oloroso sherry casks. So, what I'm definitely getting there is that sherry. Kind of like a... Sort of uh, berries, but uh, more of the subdued dried fruits. I get kind of a, a muted tone there. Almost like the fruit that you find in like a trail mix or something like that, with you know occasional um, smatterings there of uh, more ripe, uh, fresh berries. But I'm also getting I'm not getting a huge overwhelming kick that you know you think you might get with a 46 percent um, ABV whiskey, um, and I think that's probably due to the um, the pot still content. It's kind of mellowing that down. Like we said in other reviews, once the pot still content becomes uh, more dominant um, within the whiskey, within the mash bill, um, it tends to take on a more um, subdued note. It's not as spicy as um, as would say, uh, you know, a rye whiskey might be, something like that. Definitely a little bit of, of honey going on in there. Some grassier notes, um, fresh cut grass I'm getting in there. Little squeeze of lemon. And um, definitely some, the citrus, a little bit of citrus and vanilla notes in there. Um, nothing to do with, you know, the, the, or little to do with the maturation, you know, it's not like we're dealing with um, highly toasted um, bourbon barrels or something like that where we're getting that influence from there but just you know if you were to go in and smell a jar um, with vanilla sticks in it or something like that this is kind of the the nose you might get so um, first I'm going to take a, um, a taste just at the 46% ABV and then we'll um, we'll add a few drops of water and uh, I'm sure I'll find something to talk about and we'll just let that sit for a little bit Now, I have to say, and maybe it was because, you know, I was kind of getting bombarded with, you know, different things we were talking about at, um, on the tour, um, doing whiskey tasting, talking with other people, but I always say it's nice to have, uh, kind of a more quiet space where you can really get into your whiskey and really think about the flavors and stuff like that, because what I'm getting now is kind of a different experience than I remember, um, still for the better. What I'm getting is a really full body um, flavor going on in there. Definitely with the, um, I can taste um, that barley um, note in there, but it balances perfectly with the fruits uh, that we talked about and the pot still content. Um, if you're a fan of Tullamore, which I know a lot of people out there are, and if you're a fan of Irish whiskey in general, I think this is 
if you can get your hands on it, I mean, I know it's hard to get. It's not like saying just go out to the store and buy it because you can't do that. But um, if you got any connections or can get over um, to the visitor center and tell them more, this was really a nice bottle um, to get. Those the sherry, the sherry uh, influence in this is just phenomenal. You know, to be honest with you, um, the sherry kind of impact that I get here is something like I've never really gotten with um, other Irish whiskeys. I kind of, and this reminds me of like a 12-year a Macallan that um, we reviewed earlier with the amount of sherry that's in there. Just wonderful. It's got a nice spiciness to it. Um, there's a lingering uh, sense to it, which I think adds to it because it's not like just oh well that kind of tastes like cherry there, but it, then it's gone. But this kind of this lingers a while. It's it's wonderful. It's so flavorful, um, and I'm gonna add a little water here. We talk about it. Um, Handy whiskey dropper. Now, as I, I've mentioned before, when it comes to water, if you're going to, um, you know, dilute down a little bit, take a couple things into factor. Um, obviously, I've taken a couple sips of this, so I don't need as much. Um, you know, kind of gauge it on your own. You don't need something like this. A spoon will work fine. Um, so I'm just going to add oh, maybe two drops there. We'll add one more in just for, uh, I don't know, for whatever. Um, so there we go, but when you're um, adding water to your whiskey, what you normally want to do is get um, a little pitcher like this or something like that, uh, actually the glass where it doesn't really matter, um, get some filtered water, some bottled water works fine, um, it doesn't need to be freezing cold, room temperature is fine, you don't also don't want boiling water, you don't really need that, um, I, I wouldn't even want to fathom what that would do to it. Um, but. But yeah, just get you some nice water in there. Um, let it sit a while. Obviously, reviewing this, I can't, you know, pause for 30 minutes and just talk about nothing. I mean, I could, but nobody would watch it. Um, so, just give it a, a little stroll. Give it a little time. Time is always uh, your friend when it comes to whiskey. So, we're just going to see if anything changes. Um, that sort of thing. Already, I'm sort of... Um, Noticing this kind of tardiness that's coming out of it. Um, I think I kind of attribute it to the um, I believe the the 12 year um, special reserve. It's kind of got that um, sweet and uh, tardiness going on in there You know definitely some of the grains coming through you can uh, you can taste the uh, the malted barley It's going for a taste Now definitely the pot still content is still, for me at least, predominant um, in the taste. I'm getting a slight spiciness on the finish um, that I didn't really get before. Um, before it was kind of a, a smoother thing. Um, and I think what, what is going on there is uh, taking out the water sort of numbed down the, um, the sherry content um, that I was getting in the taste and kind of bumping up the pasta content and some of the spices that are in there. So, you know, this, this is why we experiment. Um, it's all about how you like um, your whiskey, but you know, you gotta, you gotta applaud Tom Moore for bumping it up there to 46% to give us the option at least, you know. When something's at 40%, yeah, you could add a few drops of water, but really, in my opinion, you're not gonna get much of a change. Just my opinion. No, it's still good. I'm not saying that there's um, like a total loss of sherry. It's definitely there, but it's more in the background, kind of just like supporting it a little bit. Um, but definitely the grains, um, like I said, are there. The finish, obviously not lasting as long as it did before at the 46% ABV. It's not like the Tullamore at um, the Phoenix at 55%, where you get kind of this like, yeah, you get, you get the Phoenix, you get the fire there. Um, kind of rules around 
um, bashing around on your palate for a while, um, and then kind of sizzles off with a little, you know, after flare going on. This is, you know, it's nice and smooth. Um, I, I think it's wonderful. I think the, the Olorosa Sherry was a great, great choice um, to age it in. Um, and what I think that does, I think it helps lift up the balance and this uh, medium body that they've got going on here with the flavor. Um, rather than, you know, bourbon might do, because you might get more of the smokier um, notes in there, the woodier uh, content going on there. So I think they've achieved something pretty, uh, pretty good there. Nothing more to be said than it's already been said, really. Now, um, we're going to get off Tullamore soon, I promise. I always keep coming back, but as long as they're going to keep making stuff that I find, you know, I'm going to have to review it. Um, so, we do have, next week we'll have another Tullamore. Yes, there, there is another one. Um, that I found while I was in um, Dublin Airport. It's actually Tullamore that's been aged in cider casks. Um, it's not a flavored whiskey. No, it's been finished in um, some really um, high quality cider casks. It's kind of an ode to the old uh, traditional um, spirit making and cider making that um, some of the early uh, monks might have done in Ireland and around the world. So I think, I think, it, I mean, it tasted great when I tasted it. So I wasn't going to get it anywhere else. So, you know, I had to get a bottle of it. And so we'll have that for you next week. Um, until then, everyone enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, hope the weather is treating you nicely. It's getting a little better around here, thankfully. And um, so we'll see you next week. As always, drink responsibly. And for Straight Talk Whiskey, I'm Nick. Have a good one.